Do you not realize that the Holy Spirit dwells in you? If you are a Christian today, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Why do I say that? Because the Bible teaches me so. In Romans we read, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. If we are indeed saved from our sins, then the Holy Spirit has come to dwell within us. And so he was writing to the Corinthians and writing to us, telling us, you need to remember that. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you. You're actually a dwelling place for God. And whatever you do with your body, you're involving God in that. He also tells us we are not our own. Why not? Because we have been bought. We have been bought with the price. The price, of course, being the precious blood of Jesus Christ himself. And so God's desire for us is sanctification, that we have been set apart. We need to view ourselves as people who have been set apart. And as people who have been set apart unto God, we are to live a life that honors God. That pleases God. We belong to Him. We no longer belong to ourselves. Our body belongs to Him. And what we do with it will either honor God or it will dishonor God. He also says that there's a second reason. He speaks of holiness in verse 7. Uh, The word holy literally means to be different. God is holy because God is obviously very different from us. He is righteous. He is pure. He is sinless. Now, certainly we aren't, uh, in ourselves anyway, perfectly righteous. We are indeed clothed with the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. But within ourselves, there are many imperfections. But the Lord has called us to become holy people, to follow Jesus Christ. Remember, we have the Holy Spirit within us. The Holy Spirit is there to empower us and to encourage us and to give us the direction and the strength we need to live a holy life, uh, to purge our lives from sin, to turn away from sin. We are to be morally pure in contrast to this world. Now, as Christians, it's very important for us to know how sin attracts us and how it also deceives us because we are in this world. When the Lord saves us from our sins, when he gives us eternal life, he doesn't take us immediately into heaven. I wish, I wish he would, but he doesn't. He leaves us here. He has a purpose for us being here. And so here in this world, we encounter many temptations. Uh, Satan tries to lure us away. And we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware of his tactics, uh, how he tries to, to persuade us to no longer follow the Lord's moral standards. Satan and sin have no originality. That is something that we need to understand. There's nothing original in anything that Satan offers to us. Satan cannot create something new. If he could, he would be God. He's not God. He can't. All he is able to do is to take what God has made, and everything that God has made is good, But he is able to take what God has made, what God has created, and then pervert it. Uh, C.S. Lewis once said that uh, evil is nothing but spoiled goodness. I think that's true. Uh, Satan really does not have the power to create anything at all. But he is able to take what God has created and created beautiful, created perfect, and then to warp it, to distort it, to make it into something that's destructive something that is evil and ugly. Uh, Evil is actually like dark, Uh, the darkness. Uh, What is darkness anyway? Well, think about that for a moment. What is darkness? Well, it's the absence of light. Sure, that's what it is. It isn't really anything. You're not telling me what darkness is when you say it's the absence of light. You're telling me what it is not. There isn't anything there. Something's missing. Something isn't there that we call light. Light is positive. It has real existence. Uh, you know, physicists, uh, they're not really sure what it is. Uh, there are different theories about what, what light is. But one thing is certain. It does exist. It is something. That's why even the smallest candle will dispel the most intense darkness. Go into a cave. Uh, light a match. It lights it up. 
And no matter how intense the darkness is, the darkness never can extinguish light because darkness has no real existence. And that's what evil is, is the absence of what should be there or the perversion of something that God has created. This simply means that all sin can offer us is an illusion, not reality. It can only mimic the good. It cannot produce the good. Satan makes great promises, but he can't deliver. He promised Eve freedom. He promised her liberty. He said to her, Eat of the forbidden fruit, and you shall become like God, knowing good and evil. Actually, to know good and evil doesn't mean just to know what it is, uh, but the idea contained there is to have the ability to actually determine what good and evil is. Uh, you're able to actually control it. Uh, you have the ultimate liberty, the ultimate power, the ultimate freedom. He promised her freedom. But what did he deliver? Slavery, death, expulsion from the garden, misery, suffering. No, Satan makes promises, great and grandiose promises, but he can't deliver. He has really nothing to give to you, nothing at all, other than what God has created and he has taken and warped or spoiled, as Lewis put it. Now, here in this passage, St. Paul spoke mainly about sexual ethics. He did so because sexual immorality was a very serious problem in that particular society, uh, just as it is in our own society today. So let's think about that for a few moments. Uh, what are some of the illusions of sexual license? Uh, what does sexual license or, or sexual promiscuity offer to us? Well, freedom, uh, liberation. Uh, you'll be completely free. You won't be bound by anything. Uh, you won't be tied to any one person. It promises happiness, promises pleasure. It promises self-expression, so forth and so on. Uh, does it deliver? What's the reality? Well, instead of freedom, the reality is slavery. Slavery to one's passions. Today, uh, we hear about people who have sexual addictions. That's a new thing, new terminology, the new psychology, I suppose. Nothing new about it at all. It simply means that there are people who are enslaved by their own passions. That's the reality. There's also the reality that people who go down that road become unable to maintain meaningful and lasting relationships with other people. God said the two shall become one. But people who are sexually promiscuous uh, have an inability to do that, to really become one with any other human being. And those other people are turned into objects whose only value is the temporary pleasure that they provide. And then, of course, there's the reality of disease. I read just this week that worldwide there are 14 million AIDS orphans. Little babies, little children, with no mother, no father, 14 million. And it's projected that by the year 2010, there will be 25 million AIDS orphans. Now, is Paul saying that sex is evil? Well, absolutely not. Sex was created by God. It was God who made male and female. And everything that God creates is good. It is the misuse. It is the perversion of good that is evil. It is beauty being turned into ugliness. God creates human beings who are beautiful. Satan comes along and tempts us to go away from God's plan, to go away from God's purposes, and it becomes evil. St. Paul was warning us not to be led astray. How does that happen? Well, uh, Lot in the Old Testament, I think, is a prime example there. If we look at the life of Lot, we can see three very distinct steps in Lot's downfall. It's found in the 13th chapter of Genesis. Lot, of course, was Abraham's nephew. Uh, both were very wealthy, uh, so much so that they really couldn't live close together any longer. So Abraham says, well, you need to uh, choose where you want to go. And so we read that Lot looked in the direction of Sodom. Then in Genesis 13, 12, we read that Lot moved his tent as far as Sodom. And finally, we read 
that he was dwelling in Sodom. And after Sodom, we read that Lot was living in a cave. Sin offers much, but all it does is take. We become less, not only materially, but also spiritually. Yes, sin offers much, Satan offers much, but he can't deliver. He can't follow through. Satan is a scam artist. That's all that he is. But God gives us what is true. God gives us what is good. He gives us real beauty, real happiness. And that is only available through the one who loves us, the one who made us, the one who offers us an eternal relationship with him. And that is God and Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It has been our pleasure bringing God's word into your homes. It is our sincere hope that you have been blessed with today's message. A video recording of today's program is available for a donation of $10 for DVDs and $15 for VHS to help cover costs. If you would like to become a part of this ministry, we welcome your support through your prayers and donations. You can contact us by mail at St. Andrew's Church, 18001, 94th Avenue, Tinley Park, Illinois, 60477, or by telephone at area code 708-614-7404. Information about our preschool program is available by calling 708-614-7006. Also, be sure to visit our website and links at www.andrewreck.org. This information will be repeated again at the end of our broadcast. We hope you've enjoyed listening to God's Word, and we invite you to tune into our program again and to come and visit us during our services. Sunday school begins at 9.30 a.m., worship at 10.30, Bible study is 7.30 p.m. Thursday night. Till next time, may God bless you and keep you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Peace.